Hey everybody, Tom Foster here with a special edition of Tom Talks, and this is Tom Talks to Smart People. And so I got my buddy, Dr. Brant Gibson here from American Fork, Utah. Yes. I didn't hear of American Fork, Utah before I met Brant. I didn't know anything about it. But Brant is a podiatrist, and he's been with us for six, seven years. Oh, it's been a long, long time. Longer than that. I think it's, it's been, been, yeah. And you were one of the first podiatrists right. that uh, came on. And um, you have an interesting story, right? So I do. one of the things that is well known about you, Mr. Gibson, or Dr. Gibson, is uh, you have uh, quite a few children. Yeah, just 11. Just 11. <laughs> He's just getting started. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> not just getting started, but we we have eleven children, and it's it's actually where all the happiness comes from. Right. That's where we get most of our most of our enjoyment in life, and so forth. So everything that I do is focused around them, really. So. And so you're here getting. Uh, you came in for a training day and brought brought your oldest child, Camilla, and the number third, three, number Ryan. three, and they both work right now. With our marketing, in yeah, yeah. working in practice. Yep. And they did they decide to do that on their own, or was it like Dad say, "Hey, if you want me to pay for college, you better come here and help me out." Or? Camilla actually has worked in even in high school. She was actually a medical assistant initially in high school, so she'd come and actually help us. And then when the marketing job opened up, she's she was the perfect fit. So we offered it to her, and she goes, "Well, that, that's the job I wanted the whole time." Oh, really? So, did you know that? No. She hadn't communicated that to you? She didn't tell me that, but that's the one she wanted the whole time. So. Well, there you go. So, like, there's a lesson. Ask your kids if they want to work for you, because yep. maybe they, they want to, and they're, you know, maybe they're afraid, or they don't, they don't know it's okay to ask. I've got, uh, I had Thomas working here. Thomas is the second time he's worked here. And um, I've had Sam work here for a little bit. Of course, Chad, my little brother. Some people think he's my son. <laughs> He's too old for that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's a good segue to, because uh, that's kind of like, that's a neat thing to work with your kids. Not everybody would want to do that, but that's a life choice that, that you have made. Right, and currently we have four of my children that are working there. So, Wow, that's like almost half. <laughs> Not quite. I'm more of a th like a third. Third. Well, I, I should say, because I've got th the three others that are actually the janitors of the building, so they go in and clean it every twice a week. Oh, that's cool. So, so are you, you have any other doctors working in your practice? No other doctors right now, just me. And you like it that way? I like it that way right now. Let's talk about that a little bit, because <clears throat> um, tell me a little bit about your why you got in podiatry. Tell me a little bit of background, your story. Um, just give us a little... Since I was two years old, I wanted to be a doctor. And that was basically my whole life. Um, you I don't, come from a big family yourself? I come from a family of six, six okay. children. But I, I don't have any doctors in my ancestors at all. So there's no, my parents aren't, my grandparents, nobody's at doctors. But I've always wanted to be a doctor, as long as I can remember. Um, and so it was always the process I was going through. So I went down to Miami, trying to increase my chance of getting to medical school was down at Barry University, which is one of the podiatry schools, and I was taking classes to get a master's degree. And as I was taking these classes, I was going, I was taking the same classes as the first year podiatry students. And the more I found out about it, the more I said, this is what I want to do. And there were a couple different reasons. One is, podiatry is one of the options that you have as a doctor where you can actually uh, go into the, the room, help these patients, and they can come in with pain and leave without. Oh, interesting. And there's not, it's not where I'm saying, okay, let me give you this medication. We'll see you in three months. Hopefully it works. We're actually trying to help solve their problem right off the bat. The second is... So that was one of your callings that was to it. That's one of the, one of the like reasons I wanted to do it. The second reason why I decided I wanted to do it is I, at that time, when I was just starting podiatry school, I already had three children. And the most important thing to me was my family. And I could be on call 24 hours a day as a podiatrist. And very rarely will I miss a birthday or a soccer game, or a lacrosse game, or a basketball game, or whatever. I can go to everything. That's interesting you said that. You said that to me a little while ago, that that is the <clears> most important. Well, your faith. Faith, yeah. Right? And um, your family. Faith, and my then, family, and then, yeah. Then the rest. Then the rest, yeah. And so, uh, you've really kind of incorporated all that together, and that's really, really what I want to talk about, is like how you've been able to create 
kind of your perfect life, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, and you're a young guy. I mean, and you've already done that. And uh, that's with 11 children. I mean, like, that's quite a feat. So tell me a little bit about your secret there. Like, what is it that, uh, what are you passionate about? What makes you tick? What uh, gets you going? Well, I guess, first thing, I mean, I, like I said, I, I, I try to put God first. Mm -hmm. um, so I will actually move things around. So if, if there's something that I need to do for the church or for God, and I feel like it's important, I will actually reschedule patients or get patients to function around that. Same time, I do the same for my family. Right. So I, I schedule time off. So every every Friday, every week, unless I'm out of town, then it will usually be a Saturday, my wife and I go on a date. That's a priority, and I've done that since we got married. And it's, no matter what, that's the highest priority. Work doesn't interfere with that, no matter what. Um, the second part about that is actually making sure that I'm there for my children. So if I find out there's a concert or something going on, and I currently have patients there, I'll move them because it's more important that I get, get there. The interesting thing is it hasn't affected my patients at all. I think there's a lot to say about that um, because what I've, what I've found is that the more balanced you are in life, and you sound pretty balanced. I mean, you've got you know your your faith, your relationship with God, right? Which is your you have your priorities together. Then you've got uh, the relationship with your wife and your family, and you put that above. And then you have the relationship with the business and your patients, right? And your life and my staff, right? Yeah. And everybody kind of knows the hierarchy or the chain of command, right? So right. everybody kind of goes along with it. And your patients respect the fact that, oh, I, I need to make an adjustment because something's going on with your family or something's going on in the church. Right. Now, is that relationship because of um, they know you? Uh, because, I mean, like, how, explain that. Like, how do you have, you know what I'm getting at? There, yeah, there's, there's, there's two advantages. One is my location. I'm not the only one that has that priority system. Right. So... Where I'm at, the LDS church is, is a high portion of the population, so that it's, it's almost expected. But also from day one, it's always been that way. I, I never went into this saying, okay, once the business is working like it's supposed to, then I'll put my family first. Yeah. Or once I, once I get to a certain point, then I can start focusing on the church. Do you no. think a lot of doctors do that? I think everybody does that. I think that what happens is they're going... I've got to be successful first, and then I can start focusing on the things that are important. Why don't you be successful in everything? Be successful in life. Don't worry about just being successful in your business or whatever, or your medical practice, podiatry practice. Be successful with what you want to be doing 20 years from now. Why can't you do it now? Why do you have to wait for 20 years? Why do you have to wait till everything gets put in place? If you make those your goals now, then everything can be put in place with that being part of it. I mean, I was, I was able to leave my practice without any other doctors there for over two weeks and go to Germany and pick up my son from his LDS mission. The practice still stayed functioning. The patients were still able to be seen in such a way that it, was, it didn't affect their care at all. But it wasn't convenient. I couldn't say, well... Could I have been seeing patients those two weeks? Absolutely. Would I trade it for the world? Not at all. I would well, do it again. you set it up. And we were talking about that before we started this, this video about how you, you want to, you've set up your life to be a certain way. Right. And you want to continue to do that. You have other goals and plans. And, and we talked about that. You told me what that was. And you're going to put, that's why you're here, to right. start putting those things in place so you can do that. So I can keep doing that. Yes. Right. And so... What would your advice be to other doctors? You said, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, like, um, you know, the bare minimum, guys doing the bare minimum. And, you know, you've been very successful as a podiatrist in your area. You know what I mean? You're not, like, hurting for patients. And, right. You know, you have what you like, and you've, you've set your life up very well. What, what advice would you give to another doctor or any business person to be able to set up their life in this way? I guess basically you got to say, what do you want? 
what it, what are your ultimate goals? What are you working for? Right. Your, your goals. Yeah. And it's what do you want it to be? It, it's and it's not just I want to make such and such amount of money. That's not what I'm talking about. What do you want from your life? Where do you want to spend your time? Where do you want to who do you want to be with? All that kind of thing. Um, That's so if, true, Brian. If I true. walked away from podiatry right now, I love podiatry. I, I, I wouldn't do anything else. If I walked away from it right now, I would still have the things that are most important to me. Because Shirley's not going to go anywhere. She and I are together, and we like being together, and we're enjoying our time together. And the more we're together, the more we like each other. Um, my children are some of my best friends. Right. And I can actually talk to them and sit down with them and sometimes even call them on the carpet and say, look, this is how it needs to be. And they expect it and they like it, and that's not going to change. And so you really got to decide, what do you want? Where are you trying to go with this? And go there now. Don't wait for 20 years from now. Say, this is the kind of lifestyle I'm going to be. And right now, I'm going to act like that's how my life is. It's the, the fake it till you make it type situation. But instead of faking it, you're actually doing it now. So that down the road, as things change, as you get busier in your medical practice or your business, your priority still is the same. And so you're still having time to spend with your wife. You're still having time to spend with your children and still having time to spend with any other priorities, whether it's God or other hobbies or anything like that. You know, going back to real quick here, what you had said about waiting, you know, like doing all the work on the business first and then, you know, like getting that done. And, you know, that it just doesn't work. Your kids grow up. You don't really have that solid relationship with them because you were gone during those very important times. Right. Um, and so you're right. And it's funny that you, you're actually, you, and you always have lived that balanced life that I hear from you know books I read and and I do my best I know Jim does too about having a, a balanced life uh, which is you know your your own personal stuff your your work stuff your spiritual stuff um, all that needs to be in balance for you to be like so chill and like here's Brant right here is like one of the chillest guys I know well Brant thanks so much for coming out I enjoyed our talk short talk right well it's pretty short Jim comparatively. Um, it could go on and on, uh, but I really appreciate you coming out and telling us kind of your story. You got your team here learning how to do more stuff in DSS and, right. and, and how to make that website bigger and better and get more of the patients that you're looking for t for the lifestyle that you're looking for. It's not right. a volume thing, is it? It's not more a of a... It's to support my family and my God, basically, so right. I can actually do what I want to do. Right. And that's really it, guys, is if you want to be happy, you need to live a balanced life. And that doesn't mean work all the time. That's kind of what we're talking about here. And here's a great example. And if you want to know uh, a little bit more about Brandt, then look him up and uh, give him a call, right? right. You'll talk to, any, talk to doctors about how to do better. I'm not, I'm not hard to find. It's, yeah. it's Utah Foot Doc. Yeah, Utah Foot Doc. <laughs> and uh, it's a really good website that he's got there. Yeah. It's so great yep. talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everybody. Tom Foster of Tom Talks. We'll see you on the next one.